Welcome to Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Planting the seed of truth and growing families in the Word of God. One of the words that kept coming out this weekend in the conference just fit beautifully where I believe the Lord's wanting us to go in our growth series. We've been talking about growing up in certain areas. And that is growing in strength. The word that kept coming up this weekend was resilience. Resilience. Um, resilience means the ability to withstand or to recover quickly from difficult situations. It's a toughness. See, people came up here and they received a day and they may have to stand for it. Because what Cindy was saying is sometimes uh, after we've received something, there's what we call, or what I call a counterattack. Like, you re did you really receive that? That's what the enemy will say, right? He always causes a question. Did you really receive that? Did anything really happen? And we have to be able to stand and to be tough enough when we receive something from God, even if we just read it in his word and we say, oh, that's mine. I received that by faith. There has to be a toughness about us that is willing to stand and not let it go. And so we've got to grow in strength. When we become believers, we have to grow in strength. And we know from Mark 4, and you can turn there, we're not going to read the whole parable but it's the parable of the sower. And Jesus starts talking to his disciples about this seed and uh, scatters on the, these different kinds of soils and, that, and what happens to that seed, whether it brings fruit or not, whether it produces or not. And so he starts explaining it to his disciples. And we're just going to pick up, I think I put 14 in your notes, but I think it's actually 15 where I'm going to start. No, 14. I'm all right. It says, the sower sows... The Word. What's the Word? The Word is the Scripture, okay? You sow the Scripture into your mind. How do you do that? I want to be really basic today. The sower sows the Word. How, you're the sower. How do you sow the Word into your heart? Read it, speak it, meditate on it, which think about it, ponder it. You take that word, you don't just read it and, y'all, I've read the word before and not received it. Yeah. Putting some effort into thinking on it. You receive it, you begin to speak it, you begin to think about it and ponder it. The sower sows the word. And these are they, they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they've heard, Satan comes immediately... immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. He, take, he just takes it. He just takes it away. They say, as easy as taking candy from a baby, but don't try to take candy from a baby. It's not easy. <laughs> if they got a hold of some candy, it's, that's not easy. That's not a good analogy. But when we take the word, God's intention for us is to hold on to the word. Amen. Yeah. To not let any contrary thing just take the word from us. And, and that's one of the marks of maturity is when you realize, I know I received the word today and I know what Satan's going to try. I know what he's going to try. Uh, the, the scripture tells me that he's going to come immediately, try to steal that word. And maturity will say, you're not taking my word. Amen. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I took God at his word. I'm not going to be moved by what you've tried. If you're believing God uh, for, for your finances, you know, and the dishwasher breaks down or the, the tire goes flat or whatever, you don't, you don't get off of the word. You don't let go of the word. You let the word produce what it was made to produce. And so this resilience, this standing, this not letting him take it is an important part of getting to produce. If he takes the seed, there's not going to be a production. There's not going to be any fruit from that word. If you let him take the seed, there's not going to be any results from the word. I know I'm oversimplifying that, but... 
That's just what was strong on me this morning. Verse 16. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they've heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Both these people heard the word. And they received it with gladness. They were happy about it. Gladness, by the way, is a sign of receiving. It builds a hope in you when you receive it, right? But they have no root in themselves. And so endure, but for a time. Afterward, when affliction, trouble, or pressure, that's what that means. When trouble or pressure or persecution, which is persistent annoyance. You ever had any persecution? Persistent annoyance? Arises for the word's sake. What's it come for? What's the trouble come for? What has the pressure come for? What has the persistent annoyance come for? It's come for the word. He's after the word because he knows the word is what will produce in your life. It's what produces the God kind of life in you. It's the seed of the word of God, right? Seed produces after like kind. So we sow the word of God in our life, we get the God kind of life. The enemy doesn't want us to have the God kind of life. He wants to take that word from you because he knows it. That ought to make you mad when things happen to try to get you to, to, to come off the word. To move off your faith. You ought to recognize. I want you to recognize what's happening when it happens. No, no. I know what this is. This is persecution for the word's sake. Somebody starts troubling you, irritating you when you're trying to walk in love. It's not about you. It's for the word's sake. They're coming after, he's coming after the word. It arises for the word's sake and immediately the person is offended. <clears throat> what happens when you're offended? You quit the word. You give up the seed. You don't want to do it anymore. I'm just not going to take it anymore. I just can't do that anymore. I, can't, I, can't, I cannot go through that again. Let me tell you something. Yes, you can. Amen. If you choose to, yes, you can. We have got a bunch of soft Christians, and we've got to toughen up. I look back at the early church, and I think, wow, what these people endured. What these people endured. And we're upset because the church did this or the church did that or they didn't do this and they didn't. These people were being tortured publicly for fun. Lit up like lanterns. Killed for sport. Come on, Christians. Your pews are padded. We got heat in there, but let's not be soft. Amen. Right. Let's be resilient. Let's outlast trouble. Let's hang on to the word and not let the enemy have it, no matter what circumstance happens around us. I'm preaching to me too. This person in the scripture was quick to receive, but they were quick to quit. I don't want to be quick to quit. And they're quick to quit probably because we tend to default Back to our own capabilities, our own feelings, our own ways of coping. Oh, this is how I handle it. When, when somebody does that to me, I cut them off. Well, it would, it's not long till you've cut everybody off. I don't know if you've noticed this or not. If you haven't, you will. We need the household of faith. We need the household of faith. I have lived it, and I am so thankful that my parents raised me in church. I know church is not the answer. Jesus is, but the church is his body, and you can't sever the head from the body. He's the head. The church is the body. You can't sever the head from the body. Well, I love Jesus. I just, that'd be like me going, I won't use you. Tanya, I love your head. I love your head. And me hating the rest of her. That's very good. 
Yep. Can, I, can I just, can, can your head and I go shopping today? <laughs> can, how about me and you, me and, can I take your head and go to Hot Springs this weekend? You can't, you can't separate the head from the body. Right. We need each other. We, we strengthen each other. And so we can't cope and deal with things the way we used to. As we know, it didn't work out too well. We've got to practice being de- dependent on God. No matter how strong you think you are, there are things in this life that your strength cannot handle. I just can't. Paul is praying over the believers in Ephesus. This is Ephesians 1. I'm going to be reading it to you out of the Amplified. He's praying over the believers at Ephesus in, in verse 17 of Ephesians 1. He says, For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. This is what he prays. That he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into the mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and so that you can understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints so that you can know and understand What is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power? Paul's praying for the church. He wants to make sure that you know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing. That means beyond the usual mark. Power that's beyond the usual mark. Power beyond what you usually function in. Power, power to rise above how much you can normally handle. Power that will surpass what your mind can handle. What your heart can handle. What your body can handle. What your thoughts can handle. That's why he gives us the peace that passes all understanding. It goes, this is it. It's immeasurably, it surpasses it. So when you're dealing with things and you catch yourself saying, I I just don't know if I can handle this anymore. Perfect. Finally. Give it up. Not the seed. Give up your power. Trade it for his and let it surpass. Let it surpass what you could handle. I don't know how long I can do this. I don't know how long you can either, but I can know how long he can because he just told me immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing. Greatness of his power. That word power, I bet you can guess which Greek word it is, can't you? Dunamis. Miraculous power. Explosive God power. Beyond human strength power. It says, he will, let me go back because this is important that it connects. He wants us to know and understand the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe. His immeasurable, dunamis, miracle working, powerful, explosive power in, in, And for us who believe. This is the word. It's connected to pistis. It's like faith. Those who are believing. Those who are in faith. That's why we got to preach this. You got to know this kind of power is available. And you got to know to pull from it. it. It's for us. It's in us who believe. Listen to this. Gets even better. As demonstrated... He wanted, you know, when you go to Sam's and they have a demonstration. Now, I like to hit the little sample carts myself. But occasionally, <laughs> the food sample carts. Occasionally, they'll, they'll be selling a vacuum cleaner or they'll be selling something. And they'll have a little demonstration. 
God wants to give you a little demonstration of this. This power is available to you. You can pull from this power. Can't you just see Vanna White selling this? <laughs> this, this power is available to you. And here, I'm going to demonstrate it for you. So God gives us this demonstration. And guess what it is? As demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his own right hand. What kind of power? The kind of power that he exerted in Christ when the Holy Spirit entered the heart of the earth in the midst of all of God's enemies in front of the devil himself and all things evil and it could not hold Jesus in the heart of the earth or in the grave but when that power hit Jesus it <sighs> up he came and all of hell could not stop it. Jesus demonstrated, God demonstrated his power in that. He gave us that and he says, oh, this power that's available to those of you who believe was also that mighty strength that I demonstrated for you when I did that. I want in. I want in. You don't have to sell me on this. There have been times in my life when I needed life-giving power. I don't even know what to say about that. I don't even know what to say about that. And here I am down here trying to fix this. Because I'm so strong. I'm such a strong woman. Such a, you're such a strong man, Ken. Here you are trying to fix this. And God's over here saying, let me demonstrate this power to you. This is available. I'm just so tired. I don't know if I can do this another day. Okay. Let me demonstrate this for you. Let me demonstrate this for you. You know, I was thinking about something, which is sometimes dangerous. But when we first, you know, we, when we first got into the faith movement, so to call, so called it, we changed the name and we changed the words to all kinds of songs. Some of it was good. But there's one song I have a little bit of problem with. Jesus loves me. Because we changed the words and now I almost have to struggle to say them the right way. But I think the right way was right. We were weak. But he is strong. Yes. And, and we changed the words. But when we're, we're going to read some more stuff from the Apostle Paul here who obviously lived in this power. Pulled from it. Had to. The song's right. It's right. Because there's times, many times, that I need to put more dependence on God and take it off my own strength. When I'm tired, I ought to know what power I'm tapping into. Because if I'm tapped into resurrection power, I should not be tired. I, my mind should not be weary. So that ought, to, that's, that ought to be my little meter. Susan power, God power. Susan power, God power. It, it shouldn't be too hard for me to figure out. So Paul had this great revelation that Jesus himself taught him. Uh, go, to, go to 2 Corinthians 12. Let's just look at it. Boy, wasn't God fun today? Amen. Mm, that's just beautiful. I keep looking at the clock, but I think, oh, we had ministry time, which is, whew, we don't ever want to halt that. So Paul has had this experience with Jesus, and Jesus is teaching him by revelation uh, after the resurrection. And um, he, Paul is passing this on to the New Testament believer, which is you and, you and I. Obviously, this letter was to Corinth, but 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, I'm reading out of the King James Version. It says, Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, because Paul was getting some revelation. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, 
the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Y'all, this was not God doing this to Paul, punishing him for receiving revelation from him. This was the messenger of Satan sent to buffet him to try to take the word that he was receiving from him so that it could not come to you. For this thing I besought the Lord three times. Paul said, this thorn in the flesh was a little frustrating. It was getting on my nerves. It was persistent annoyance. And he said, I went to the Lord three times and asked him to remove it. And people, y'all, people mutilate the scripture. And Jesus said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, Paul said, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Hey, y'all, that's some, that's some deep word right there. Let's, let's, we're going we're gonna to go further, but let's go back through and, and talk about this a minute. I asked the Lord three times that this would depart from me. And, and Jesus said to him, my grace, that's, that's charis, it's the influence, that's the benefit, that's the favor of God, that's, that's God's influence available to you, God's power available to you, that's empowering grace to you. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength, guess which word that is? Dunamis. For my dunamis, my miraculous power and my ability is made perfect. It is accomplished in weakness. Yes. That's good. Oh, where you're weak, he can be. See, where... Where I think I'm strong, he can't be. But where I know I need his help and I need to be dependent on him, there he can fill me up with his grace, his empowerment, his ability, and it can complete, it can bring me up to task and surpass what my physical, mental ability could ever do. Amen. Most gladly, therefore, I will glory in my weaknesses. Not because I'm weak, but because I know when I'm weak and I plug into his power, all the devils in hell can't overcome it. That's not in the scripture. That's Susan's version. Most gladly, therefore, I will glory in my infirmities that the power, the dunamis, the miraculous power of Christ may rest, abide. The word literally means tent upon that the, that the dunamis power of God would tent upon you. Come on, devil. I'm under the shadow of the Almighty. That the dunamis power might rest, abide, and tent upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure. What an attitude this gives us towards the devil. See, he just thinks if he can cause us just a little bit of trouble, we wimp out. And we're scared of the devil. We're we're afraid of what he might do. We're afraid of what he might do in our families. We're afraid we might lose our jobs. We're afraid this. We're afraid that. No, we need a new attitude. Not that we want bad things to happen. But when they happen, I take pleasure in knowing this. That's what he's saying. Therefore, I take pleasure. I looked it up. It means to think well of. In infirmities, weaknesses. In reproaches, that's insults and injuries. 
In necessities, that's needs. In persecutions, that, look it up, it means persecution. In distresses, stresses for Christ's sake. For Christ's sake. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in infirmities, in infirmities, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. These are things that have come to steal the word from you. That's what he's talking about, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Powerful and capable is what that word means. For when I am weak, then am I strong, powerful, and capable because of him. I'm telling you, this kind of reliance, this kind of resilience takes faith and trust and a revelation of his love for you. It does. It takes, a, for you to say, not my power, but yours, you got to trust somebody. Have you ever played that game? Where you fall back and, and the person's supposed to catch you. There's a lot of you in the room. I'll try not to look at anybody. I'm not playing that game with you. <laughs> Todd Brzezinski. Um, we pester each other like a brother and sister. But there's some of you. I'll fall. I'll fall back. I'll trust you catch me. And when you go to saying, Lord, I am not going to do anything to try to fix this unless it's your instruction. I cast this care over on you and I'm not reeling it back in. I know if there's something I need to do, you'll direct me to do it. And I'll be obedient to what you tell me to do. But then we let it go. That takes trust. Didn't Ashley just give us a really good lesson last week on the love of God? Oh, it was so powerful. I just thought it fed, just laid the foundation for this so beautifully. You need to go back and listen to it if you weren't here. It was amazing about the love of God. Go with me to Ephesians 3. Oh, man, 2 Corinthians 12, that's powerful. Let's take a look at Ephesians 3. I'm going to read it out of the NIV. Kind of jumping in the middle here. Verse 12, Ephesians 3, 12. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Through Christ and through faith in Christ, we can approach God with freedom and with confidence. I ask you, therefore, because of that, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. Paul was always having to encourage the Christians because he was, he was imprisoned. I mean, just things kept happening to Paul, and he didn't want the other Christians to get discouraged on what Paul was going through because he was bringing the gospel. He said, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen, which means empower, that he may strengthen and empower you with dunamis, miraculous working power. I pray that out of his glorious riches, his storehouse, his generator, if you will, he may strengthen and empower you with power, miraculous, wonder-working power through His Spirit in your inner being. The power is in you through the Spirit. We just tend to default to the flesh. But Paul is praying that we would realize that this power is through His Spirit in our inner being, through God's Spirit in our inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power. If we're, what do roots do? 
There's several things. What do they do? It's what you draw from. It's where you draw the, the strength from, your growth from. It's also a stabilizing factor. <coughs> it's a sta- That's why we don't like to have pine trees close to the house, right? They don't have a good root system. They blow over too easy. The ground gets too wet. They just fall over. No, we want to be, what's the scripture calls us? What kind of tree? Oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. He wants us to be rooted in love. What love? His love. If I don't understand his love for me and I'm not drawing from that power, then I'm going to be blown over real easy. Any wind that blows is going to knock me over. Anything that looks like it's contrary to what I've been believing for is going to knock me over. But I've got to be rooted and grounded and established. Have you ever seen an established tree? That means it's been there. We, we, had, our, we had our family pictures uh, about a year ago taken out under a tree on the farm. I love that tree. Because it's, it's on my granny and pa's land, and it, it represents legacy to me. It represents heritage, godly. Man, they gave me good roots. Generations of godliness. That tree has seen tornadoes. That tree has had horrendous winds blow against it. It's seen floods. It's seen drought. And yet that thing is rooted and established. Christians should be rooted and established. The world ought to look at you and they've seen the wind blow against your life. They've seen the floods rise against your home. Right? Just like in Matthew. They've seen the things come against you and yet you're standing. Your marriage is standing. Your family is standing. Your home is standing. Your your finances have stood uh, through COVID and and to not just the point of surviving, but of giving through an off season, through a season of of drought. Uh, Financially, you were giving. You're established and you're rooted. You're not afraid to give because you're rooted. You're established. This, This is a whole thing here. If you're not rooted and established, you're not going to have the power to stand. Verse 18 says, let me pick it up. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power. I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints. Who? What? I don't need church. Nature's my church. Nature's not your church. It may be a sanctuary to you, but it's not your church. That you being have power together with all the saints mm, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep. These are, these are the dimensions of love. Wide, long, high, and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Mm. Wow. Wow. That you, everybody say me. Me. That you, the fullness of God in you, available to you. Now to him who is able to do, here we go, immeasurably, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Everybody say, God is able able. to do immeasurably immeasurably. more than all all. we ask, imagine, imagine. according to to. his power power. that is at work work. in me. me. Whoo! Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine. Uh, That means whatever you're thinking, he surpassed it. He can surpass it. He can surpass it. According to his dunamis power, wonder working power, miracle working power, that is at work. 
That means active. He can do according to his power that is at work or that is active within us. He can do according to his power that is at work, that is active in us. The trouble is we haven't had it at work in us. We haven't been pulling from it. It's available, but we hadn't bought in. We've seen the demonstration, but we hadn't taken it home. It's only according to the power that is active. Everybody say, I activate. I activate activate the power that he's demonstrated. To him, I don't know where I went, but there I am. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And I, I, I love something my dad used to always tie in here, and that's Romans 1, where it talks about according to his power that is at work. And dad would always tie in Romans 1, 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the, it's the power. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the... And it's that power that we want active in us. The gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for the gospel of Christ is the power. That word power means dunamis. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the message of Christ. It is the power. It is the dunamis. It is the miraculous power of God unto salvation. And that's not just salvation from the flames of hell. You look the word salvation up, soteria. It means it is rescue. It is deliverance. It is redemption from earthly ills. The gospel, the word of God. It is the power of God to rescue you, to deliver you, to save you from earthly ills. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power. And if that power is active in me, it can, he can do immeasurably more than all I could ask or imagine. Right. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Whew. We got so much available to us we haven't tapped into yet. I want, to, I want to push this a little bit. That when a situation comes and your mind says, I don't know how much more I can handle. I don't know how much longer I can. That we, we, we switch to the other tank. This gas tank's empty. Nitro, it is available. <laughs> Wonder working power. It is available. And, and how, how do I do that? What do I do in that moment? God, I'm switching. I've tried to fix this. I've done what I know to do. I'm switching tanks. That's how you do it. I'm going to listen to you. You tell me what to do. If you don't tell me what to do, I'm going to stand right here. And we don't have time to go to Ephesians 6. I had it in my notes, but we're not going to go there today because it'd take me a while. But you go over and you read about the armor of God and you, you see what it's supposed to look like when you stand you see what a winner looks like. We may go there next week, I'm not sure, but, but go look at it. You got to have a knowledge of your salvation, of your righteousness, who you are in Christ Jesus. You need the shield of faith. You need to have the word of God out in front of you. You need to spend some time in the word, let it build up in your heart, and let it come out your mouth. And instead of saying how tired you are and how you want to quit, who wants to tell their enemy, this is so stupid? Don't you just hate it when the president says, if y'all don't quit, we're going to pull out in August. You know, we do that. I don't like it when the president does it, and I don't like it when I do it. If one more, if they do that one more time, if one more thing happens, you just told your enemy what it's going to take to get you to quit. We need to start saying one more thing happens, I'm switching tanks. We need, we need a little attitude. 
We serve a big God. He's got plenty of power and he wants to share it with us. Amen. Amen. Y'all can stand. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. We pray that this message has uplifted, encouraged, and motivated you today. You can find us online at rccenter.org or visit us at 305 Lakefront Drive, Russellville, Arkansas.